This is a tale of the future. For centuries, the Sol Hegemon has ruled uncontested the greatest swath of human space in the galaxy. Earth is long abandoned, its great cities reduced to overgrown ruins as mankind has sought new homes and new dominions amongst the stars. But now, the beating heart of the Sol Hegemon has been convulsed by revolution. The rebels claim they fight for freedom and equality, but are they truly any better than those whom they name oppressor? But on the fringe of human space, worlds remain untouched by war and revolt. It is to this region that the crew of the Babylon Rocker have come, seeking peace and escape, both from the chaos of revolution and the dark specters of the past. On the fringe, there is hope. On the fringe is freedom and light and opportunity. But with such freedoms and opportunities come many dangers, some of the future, others of the past that they seek to avoid. Such is the nature of the wild edge of human space. There lies adventure. There goes Babylon Rocker. If you like what you've seen or heard, please support us on Kickstarter and help make this story a reality. Thank you. While there are many non-human races in the world of Rokugan, few of them would have as many interactions with the humans of the Emerald Empire as the subject of today's video, the Nezumi. Just as the Naga had their own brief, albeit unofficial, encounter with the humans of the Emerald Empire during the latter years of the reign of Genji, the Nezumi would soon make their own appearance in the annals of history with regards to the Emerald Empire. So this will be about who and what the Nezumi were and what they were like prior to that first contact. Which admittedly is even less than the Naga. Apparently the creators of L5R just didn't think to spend too much time on the world of Rokugan before the Kami fell from the heavens. The most coherent origin story of the Nezumi is that they existed during the time of the Naga Empire though back then, as mere animals, and that it was exposure to the powerful mutational magic of the Naga Pearls that made the Rat Men sentient. Though, of course, the Naga being the Naga, they still regarded the Nezumi as little more than animals, to be used for labor or even food. Whatever the Naga thought of them, having attained sentience, the Nezumi moved south and east, eventually settling in the land south of what would become the Emerald Empire of Rokugan. In those days, Rokugan itself was ruled by a group of five different supernatural races known as the Alliance of the Five Races. The Ningyo, the Kenku, the Kitsu, the Trolls, and the Zokujin. Ruling from the secret City of the Night based within what would become the Spine of the World Mountains, each of the five member races had a close association with one of the five elements. The Trolls with fire, the Ningyo with water, the Zokujin with earth, the Kenku with air, and the Kitsu with void. Not much else is known about the alliance of the five races or their rule of Rokugan. All that is known is that one day, for reasons that have been lost to time, they decided to give control and rulership of the Nezumi lands to one Muhonorak, the leader of a new and powerful race, the Ogres. The first and greatest of his race, Mohanarok was a particularly brutal and ruthless individual. When he had first come to Rokugan from the frozen wastes of the north, having supposedly won his right to rule the Nezumi lands in a contest against the five races, a contest of strength in which he subdued the King of the Trolls in single combat, and a contest of wisdom where Muhonorok himself and the wisest of the Kitsu race asked one another riddles. Muhonorok answered the Kitsu's riddle and then strangled him before he could answer Muhonorok's own. Muhonorok wasn't all bad. He did defeat an army of demons led by the Rakshasa, the champion of Jigoku itself, but ogre rule of the Nezumi was certainly resented enough by the Rat Man that eventually one of them managed to assassinate him, stabbing him with a dagger made from the claw of a monster known only as the King of Worms. 
The assassin died for his trouble, but he did manage to take his target with him. Without Mohonorok to lead them, the ogres were swiftly overthrown by the vengeful Nezumi, who subjected the ogres to the same servitude that the ratmen themselves had suffered. The Nezumi then proceeded to subdue the goblins and wage fierce warfare against the trolls. The Alliance of the Five Races had no choice but to respect their power, and Nezumi civilization waxed mighty. Many great cities were built, and a Nezumi empire took shape. And then the nine kami fell from the heavens, and Fu Lang fell on top of the Nezumi empire's capital hitting it so hard that he smashed through the building and then through the planes of existence, opening a rent leading to Jigoku, the realm of hell. From that great crevice spewed the taint, and those Nezumi that had survived the catastrophe, the terrible day as they called it, could only watch in horror as their land was warped and twisted about them into what the humans would one day call the Shadowlands. Within short order, whatever form of civilization the Nezumi Empire had been before the terrible day, it utterly ceased to be, and the Nezumi from that point forward were divided into small tribes, each led by a chieftain struggling to merely survive in a world overrun with horrors. After the terrible day, the Nezumi tribes mostly lived underground in burrows, where they might hide from the monsters that now stalked their former home. Each tribe had its own unique social structure, but it was always led by a chieftain, seconded by his generals or chukteks, and always advised by shamans and rememberers. The first chieftains of the tribes met at a place northwest of where would later be situated the castle of Shirohiruma and declared it the meeting place, where all chieftains swore an oath to ensure the continued survival of their people by any means necessary. Any and all disputes between tribes would be resolved peacefully at the meeting place, and elders could summon the tribes together at the meeting place to face a common enemy. With that, let's move on to Nezumi shamans and Nezumi magic. Shamans are essentially the Shugenja of the Nezumi race, and like the Naga, their magic is distinct from that wielded by the humans of the Emerald Empire. It's called name magic, and it's possibly one of the most powerful in all of L5R, at least in terms of potentiality. The Nezumi perspective upon the mortal world is a unique one, mainly because they have a very strong connection to what is called the realm of dreams, what the Nezumi call Itich, the land of once and forever name. As the Nezumi see it, life is itself nothing more than a dream. Death is the awakening from that dream. And in the dream, in classic fantasy tradition, names have power. That is the essence of name magic. Through training, meditation, and spirit journeys into the realm of dreams, Nezumi shamans increase their power to find, identify, and control names. To discover a name is to discover the true essence of the being that it belongs to. Thus, a shaman that specializes in finding out a name is called a name seeker or a name finder. Those who can alter the world around them by altering the names of things are referred to as name binders. Most feared of all are the name takers. To have one's name taken by a Nezumi shaman is to have one's entire existence obliterated except in the physical sense. By removing a name, a name taker severs a person from all that he is and all that he was. Not only will he lose his identity or any memory of what he was before his name was taken, but the entire world itself will be altered so as to have forgotten. As far as the world is concerned, that person never existed until now. You heard correctly. These funny little rat men, essentially nicer cousins of the Skaven from Warhammer Fantasy in L5R, have the power to literally alter the fabric of reality with names. Perhaps thankfully for the world, Nezumi shamans with that kind of power are exceedingly rare. Perhaps more essential to a Nezumi tribe's survival than its chieftain or its shaman is its titch titch, its rememberer. Perhaps the greatest legacy of Fu Lang destroying the Nezumi Empire on the terrible day 
is the fact that the trauma so affected the Nezumi race as a whole that nearly all of the Nezumi race lost its capacity to remember. Nezumi have famously short attention spans and no long-term memory whatsoever. Most Nezumi are lucky if they can recall anything that happened more than two weeks ago. Thus, the vital importance of a rememberer, that indescribably rare Nezumi individual that not only has long-term memory, but perfect recall. A rememberer is a tribe's historian, its living memory, able to recite and recall the deeds of the members of that tribe. Without these stories, without the memory of survival, of success and struggle, the Nezumi would likely have given in to despair and gone extinct long ago. The very first rememberer of the Nezumi was one Tich Tich, and in the days following the terrible day, his first great accomplishment was to set out a unified language for the entire Nezumi race. Most rememberers seek to preserve the history of their tribe through oral storytelling, but some have learned how to preserve stories in a more permanent form by creating a so-called memory stick, a piece of wood gnawed in specific patterns and imbued with certain pheromones. It is said that an Nezumi that holds the memory stick gains access to this memory, and can actually recall the deeds inscribed upon its surface. For over 50 years following the terrible day, the Nezumi struggled to survive, a dark time known as the Lean Times. By year 50 of the Emerald Empire, as the humans now reckoned time, hunger had driven many Nezumi tribes to begin sneaking into the borders of the Emerald Empire on food raids. While some stubbornly refused to abandon their old homeland, others began moving northwards, slowly but surely into the more prosperous and plentiful lands of Rokugan itself. Of course, this would inevitably bring them into contact with the humans of that land, but that is a story to be told in the near future. The last pertinent detail to be mentioned here is that after first contact with the humans, they discovered something incredible about the Nezumi that even those rat men that lived in the Shadowlands were completely and utterly immune to the taint. This was something that Rokugan Shugenja, and particularly the Kuni family of the Crab Clan, would study extensively. But in the end, it turned out the source of this immunity were beings known as the Transcendent, the Wikithichi, those whose power shines brighter than a thousand torches and whose name stands as a great wall against tomorrow. Tomorrow being synonymous with death in Nezumi culture. Transcendents are Nezumi shamans who, as the name implies, have transcended their own mortality. Such a powerful shaman does not die, but his spirit leaves his body as an entity of pure name. Transcendents are able to commune with their people through living shamans and this communion bestows upon the Nezumi what is known as Yumeji, the influence of Yumedo, the realm of dreams. And it is this influence from Yumedo that shields them against the taint. And that is the Nezumi as they were around the time of Emperor Genji's death in year 247 of the Emerald Empire, a broken race struggling for survival in a hostile world. All that the rat men had to sustain themselves during the lean times and the times after that were the stories of heroes and legends told by their rememberers, and by the hope of an ancient prophecy that one day someone called the Kasuma would come among them and bring peace to the Nezumi race. The Nezumi themselves had no way of knowing that very soon in the early 4th century of the Emerald Empire, that prophecy would be fulfilled in a way that no Ratman could ever have expected.